it's interesting for us to note that God says words, these are words without knowledge. And then immediately begins to speak about creation. Now, I was speaking, uh, I was actually, um, we recorded a, a television show earlier today and uh, interviewed a doctor, it, it'll be on uh, tomorrow on TCT. And this doctor uh, began to question evolution and did some studying and became convinced of creation and he got saved. And it's interesting for so many that evolution creation is, is the trip wire. That, that some kids fall away from the Lord because they go to school and their professors and teachers make fun of their faith, make fun of creation. And I know, look, there's a, there's a group that says, okay, uh, I believe in creation in the biblical account. Then there's people that say, I do not believe in the biblical account. I believe in evolution, but I still call myself a Christian. That's kind of a question mark to me. But then some people say, well, I believe in theistic evolution. That is that there was evolution, but it was controlled by God. If you believe in theistic evolution, in love, that's a cop out. And you, you really can't merge those two things for several reasons. Probably one of the biggest is um, the, the way animals were created in evolution, supposedly, is different from the order that we're given in Genesis. And also we're told that on this day, on this numbered day, on Yom Shich or Yom Smoni, whenever that uses day and then a number, it's not an extended period of time, it's actually a 24 hour day. If you're a parent and you've got kids in public school, be checking their textbooks, be talking to them about this. There's a very real scientific case for creation. It's very strong. The, the theory of evolution, the, same, the thing that we seem to have forgotten is that it's a theory. And Darwin himself said, if in a hundred years we have not found a lot of connecting links, then my theory is false. Well, guess what? We haven't found those links. And yet. And so when you walk that road, friend, you're doubting the beginning of the book. That's not wisdom. Not wisdom at all. Because you're believing man over God. You're placing science over the Bible. Science changes. You realize that? <laughs> Let me run. Yeah. Let's go back and let's. At verse 10. When I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, and when I said, 
This far you may come, but no farther. And here your proud ways must stop. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? That it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It takes on form like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld and the upraised arm is broken. Have you entered the springs of the sea? Or have you walked in search of the depths? Now, this is interesting. Job is one of the oldest books in the Bible. And they had probably explored the oceans some, but they didn't have submarines and they didn't have, you know, um, unless you want to count Jonah, but that wasn't really a summary. But, you know, I mean, people weren't able to observe the floor of the ocean. And science said for hundreds of years that there were no springs in the ocean. The Bible said there were. Guess what we found out? There's springs in the ocean. You know what science did? Oops. Well, we believe there's springs in the ocean now. So science was wrong and changed to fit the Bible. Now, if you're thinking, okay, well, so one instance. <laughs> yeah. Science said the earth was a flat disk. The Bible taught it was a sphere and was scoffed at by scientists. Scientists said, oh, it's flat, it's not a sphere, it's flat. Everybody knows the earth is flat, but the Bible called it a sphere. In Isaiah, written over 3,000 years ago, Isaiah 40, 22 says, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Ends up the Bible was right and science was wrong. The earth is a sphere. Science now agrees with the Bible. Science said there were 1,100 stars. The Bible taught there were innumerable stars and was scoffed at by scientists. And the Bible said this in Jeremiah over 3,000 years ago. Jeremiah 33, 22. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered. Now keep in mind, they're looking at the star with no telescope. So they can only see so many stars. And they said, no, there's only 1,100. The Bible's wrong. Can you imagine what they thought first time they looked through the telescope? And then they got the 1,101. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ends up the Bible was right and science was wrong. There are innumerable stars. Science now agrees with the Bible. Science once said Earth sat on a large animal. The Bible said the earth hung on nothing and was scoffed at. And this is actually from the book of Job. Job 26, 7 says, he stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. Now, this one's interesting because it really, it doesn't make sense, does it? The earth hangs on nothing. And it seems like it'd be sitting on something or having something, a string attached or something. But the Bible says it hangs on nothing. Well, guess what? Ends up the Bible is right and science is wrong. The earth does sit on nothing. And science now agrees with the Bible. 
Science once said light was fixed in place. The Bible said light taught that light moved and was scoffed at. In Job, in this chapter, look at verse 19. Where is the way to the dwelling of light? In darkness, where is its place? That you may take it to its territory, that you may know the path to its home. Well, ends up the Bible was right. Science was wrong. Earth, the light does move, and science now agrees with the Bible. Science once said air was weightless. The Bible taught that air has weight and was scoffed at. Again, from the book of Job, Job 28, 25. To establish a weight for the wind and apportion the waters by measure. Ends up, the Bible was right and science was wrong. Air does have weight. Science now agrees with the Bible. Oh, let's keep going. Now, now again, science once said the ocean was fed only by rivers and rain. The Bible taught that the ocean had springs and was scoffed at. Job 38, 16. Have you entered the springs of the sea? Or have you walked in search of the depths? Nobody had seen springs, but the Bible said there were springs in the ocean. Ends up, Bible was right, science was wrong. The earth does have springs. Science now agrees with the Bible. You would be shocked at how long well, some of you wouldn't be shocked, at, but I could continue this for quite a while. And a lot of verses in Job. But you get the picture. Science, psychiatry, 70 years ago, thought that one of the ways to cure you was to pull up an eyelid and to stick a screwdriver in your brain. They called it a lobotomy. And it did calm quite a few people down, but unfortunately it, it left a lot of people paralyzed and killed some people. It's interesting, you really should stop to consider that that's the same science that brings all these psychiatric drugs to the market. Be careful. So we see over and over that the Bible was right, science was wrong. 